Welcome to CADtools.com. This video series will demonstrate how to create material data in AutoCAD and how to extract the data to be manipulated with Metalop, a material optimizer. After that, we will import the tag data back to AutoCAD. Okay, that is our three elevations. And lastly, I made a multi span curtain wall, which has it's a captured 1600 SS captured and 1600 SS SSG to show you the difference of using captured and SSG mullions together and how to do the data. Also we have a multi span with a intermediate mullion splice and I threw in a 90 degree corner so we can review that data. For starters we will look at the mullion. So here's our mullion data and then the mullion splice is up here. Now I draw two lines for the splice. That is on a layer that I have set up and it's marked that does not print but my line stops at the splice and then I draw two visible lines which will be the cover splice but looking at the let's quickly glance at the mullions splice Conair's mullion splice detail so from the mullion top of the mullion down to the top of the pressure plate it's six inches or to the pressure plate it's one and a half inches to the top of the cover is six inches so we go back to the data so our mullion edit the attribute so our mullion we don't change anything it's plus or minus zero in the pressure plate when we look at the formula that is minus the one and a half inches for the cover. Or yeah, for the cover. And for the cover for the pressure plate. And for the cover, it is minus six inches. In the same way where the top mullion, everything's added. So the the mullion there's nothing added or subtracted. The pressure plate, we add an inch and a half because it now goes below the mullion splice. And the cover, we added six inches. And of course, the we'll look at the horizontals. Now this is an SSG mullion. Let's quickly look at the mullion. You'll see it is just a one piece of tag data which is the SSG mullion because at the detail that's just the back members. There's no pressure plates or covers. So the data you'll see we have the horizontal back member for that DLO and this horizontal back member and I've separated them. They're their own tag. It's a single tag associated to that line. Then the pressure plate and cover, I'm using two pieces of da uh, tag data associated with the line that now runs through between the jam daylight past the SSG mullion and then I have another captured mullion. And then, of course, the pressure horizontal pressure plate is DLO minus three quarters of an inch. And the cover is DLO minus sixteenth of an inch. And you can also, you know, make reference that this is a through horizontal if you want to add it to your remarks. So later on in Metalop, you'll know which ones because really this would be getting a custom 
we poll location. And then we will, that takes care of the mullions and the horizontals. And then the corner mullion, the corner mullion horizontals. Because they are now mitered. Let's look at that detail. This is an SSG corner, so the tongue on the sill and intermediate horizontal long point is here. And on my detail, I show these dimensions, which are on a layer that do not print. So the information is just for me. So the dimensions will be going to the work point. And you will be subtracting 2 and 3 quarter inches to the long point of the tongue. Same way with the pressure plate. The pressure plate will, you know, I lay a draw out where the end of the pressure plate will be. And of course, I'll square cut my pressure plate in this application. If it were a one legged pressure plate, it would be mitered. But since we're using standard pressure plates horizontally, I can get away with square cutting them. So we will look at the sill, and then this is an SSG mullion, an SSG corner. Let's look at the attribute data. This is the last far right mullion. And of course the formula will be minus two and three quarters, like the detail shows. And then in my remarks, um, you know, I describe the member, but then I'll add miter, either one or two, and depends on if it's mitered at one end or both ends. If it was both ends, it would have a two. So that takes care of the data, and then you adjust the data for all the members. And the mullion, which it's just one extrusion, and let's look back at the detail. One thing that we'll show later on in Metalop, I use the one extrusion, and then I will make the next extrusion in Metalop so my fabricators can have a cut list for the separate, separate extrusion. But the, it'll use both extrusions, we use the same data tag. That's the same way with these double mullions for the screw spline system, I only have one mullion tag, but I'll do that in Metalop where it has separate fab sheets. You'll see that in the Metalop video. Okay, one final thing, let's go through and add our glazing tags. This is different than the way we did it with the individual small punched openings where we started with them in one and copied them through, they were included. This one, uh, when I made the elevation and put the uh, extrusion data in, I purposely did not put the glazing data in, because in bigger elevation, sometimes it's easier to do that afterwards, especially when you have more than one glass type. So we will copy two of these. One is glass type one, the other one is glass type 2 for the spandrel. So we will edit this one to become glass type 2. So when it's extracted, we'll know the difference between the two pieces of glass. Uh, later in Metalop, I'll show you why I use the DLO and don't add. You can either use the DLO or you can make it go to DLO and then add your own glass formula where I gla add the glass formula in Excel to order my glass so that way it's just a DLO dimension which is easier to go back and check to make sure the data is correct. Okay, we will start with the glass type ones. We will copy these But we got to be careful. This is different. Uh, 
what I do because of the SSG we need to note it so I change this is where the remarks come in and help so I will make it I'll just call it SSG 1 uh, for example if we had two SSG mullions for example if this was an SSG mullion this would be an SSG1, so it would be captured on one side, SSG on the other. And if this was SSG, this would be an SSG2, meaning SSG on both sides, because this affects your glass formula. But because I have just one intermediate SSG mullion, this will just tell me which ones and separate these from the punched openings, which are have no remarks. So now we will copy all of our glazing tags. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the mitered one because it is even another formula. So I want this one to be separated and we'll call that one an SSG2 indicating that is where the mitered end is and I'll have a different formula. So let's copy. So now we will copy the spandrel glass. We need to do the same thing. Edit. The marks. This is G1. This is G2. Let's go ahead and copy these. And we'll copy that covers all of our glazing. So now we need to extend all the lines, but to make that easier, let's go to our layer and let's turn off a couple layers. And I want to turn off Add tools. So I want to turn off my hatch. So now we can go into the extend command. And this extends everything to the DLO. One thing to keep in mind that these in the SSG corners, it is going to DLO and then it's going to the edge of the glass. So these are where you need to keep track of your formulas. That should do that. All we do is turn the layers back on. Get to 
tools and blocks that should take care of that and your elevation is ready to go in the next video we will use the CAD tools data exchange program to extract the curtain wall data into a new Excel spreadsheet. Thank you for looking at the CADTools.com video and please take a look at the MetalOp Material Optimizer at MetalOp.com.